today I'll show you how to add a realistic bokeh effect to any image by using a depth map with Photoshop's lens blur filter. Plus I'll show you how to quickly and easily create your own depth map. I'll even give you a free action to speed things up even more. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I love adding bokeh effects to images because I think it can take an image that's just kind of okay and turn it into something kind of special. Recently, I've done a couple videos showing you how to use the depth blur neural filter in Photoshop, and I like that filter, but it has one big drawback, and that is if you have an image with some noise, it will not add noise to the out-of-focus areas, which looks kind of fake. And I'll show you that here in a second. But it also has a very cool feature to it. And I don't think most people even realize how cool of a feature this is. And that feature is the ability to create a depth map. Now, you may not know what a depth map is, but by the time this tutorial is over, you'll understand what a depth map is and how you can utilize it for your advantage. So let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and come up to filter and let's go to neural filters and I'm going to go ahead and launch the depth blur filter. So we're just going to come to depth blur, make sure we're selected and turn it on. Now it takes a few seconds to do its thing because it's going up into the cloud and applying the background bokeh blur effect to the image. And now here's the result and it did a really nice job, but check this out. I'm going to zoom into the image so you can really see something here. Do you see the uh, grain in the uh, face of my model and on the rest of the body and the clothing and so on? But look, there's not a lick of grain in that background. So that looks very unrealistic. You know, from a distance, it looks okay. But if you're going to go ahead and print this out, it would look very unnatural. And as great as this filter is, and no matter what kind of a great job it does, it's unusable, wouldn't you say? Because we need that grain in the background. Now I want to show you something really amazing about this filter. And that is, you see this section right here where it says output depth map only? Watch what happens when I click this on. You'll see this image that I have. It's a black and white image, shades of gray, black, and white. This is a depth map. In other words, it maps out the image. This area that is darker is closer to us. The darkest areas are the closest to us and things get a little more gray till they reach white as things go off into the distance. But this particular depth blur filter can create a depth map and it does a really good job. It's not 100% perfect, but you can fix things that aren't perfect. Like you see this area right here protrudes out from her head a little bit. That's a little mistake, but I'll show you how I can fix that. But that's not a problem. We're Photoshop people, right? And we know how to correct things, okay? So... Check this out. This is our depth map. Now, I don't have to care about any of these adjustments here. In fact, they're all grayed out. I couldn't adjust them if I wanted to. Once I click on output depth map, it simply and easily makes us a depth map. How does it do it? I don't know, but it's part of the creative cloud artificial intelligence thing. All we need to do, and usually what I do is output to a duplicate layer. Now, you have different choices in here, but I just say output to a duplicate layer and just click OK. And when you do that, here we are back in Photoshop, and there is our depth map. Now, how do we use this? Let me show you how. Now, pay close attention to what I'm going to do, but I'm going to give you an action that all this work that I'm showing you how to do will be done for you with one click of a button. But, but follow this through. It's good to learn what's actually happening here. What I need to do is take this layer and turn it into a channel, which will be our depth map. Now, make sure you have your channels palette open. If you don't, open it up. Before I turn this into a channel, you see this area right here, this little protrusion? I need to fix that before I turn this into a depth map. All I need to do to fix that is get a brush tool. I'm just going to type B. That's a shortcut for the brush tool. Have a decent sized brush. This size is good with a nice soft edge. I'm going to sample this color by holding the Option or Alt key down. This light color right here and just simply paint over that little protrusion just like that with that soft edge. That's all I really need to do. Now I can save this out as a depth map. Here's what we need to do. Make sure the depth map layer is selected. Hold your command or control key down and come to the channels palette. And you see the first uh, channel here where it says RGB. Hold your command or control key down and click on RGB. And that turns that into a selection. 
Then all you need to do is come here, see where the plus is, click the plus. That adds it to an alpha channel. Now nothing happens yet except we have a selection here. But here's the next step. Use the shortcut Shift Delete, which opens up your fill dialog box. Make sure your content is set to white, and if it's not, you can click the drop down and make sure white is checked on and click OK. And just like that, you've added that uh, depth map. It's called Alpha 1. Now you can come here and click it or double click it and call it Depth Map if you want to. Just so you know that that's what it is. And now you can deselect this. That's Command or Control D to deselect that. And now you've made your depth map. Now remember, I'm giving you an action that'll do all this for you. You'll be able to do this all with a click of a button. Now simply come to the layer one, let's delete it, click on, make sure that layer selected, click the trash can that deletes it, and then duplicate the background layer, that's Command or Control J to duplicate it. At this stage of the game, we have our depth map created. Now we can go ahead and launch the lens blur filter. Make sure you're on this new layer, layer one and click uh, filter and let's come to blur and you'll find lens blur right here. Click on lens blur and I'll show you how this works. This is a very sophisticated filter and there's a lot to it. So this video would get too long if I showed you everything, but today I'm going to show you radius and distribution. And this is where we distribute noise across the out of focus parts of the image. There's also a feature called blade curvature and specular highlights, which deals with how this interacts with highlights on your image. And I'll show you that in another tutorial. But today we're going to look at radius, which deals with how, how out of focus the background is and distribution where we can distribute noise to the background to really sell this bokeh effect. I'm going to go ahead and turn this radius the whole way up to 100% and give us maximum blurs just so you can really see what's happening here. Now, right now, depth map is set to source none. Now, remember, I made a depth map and I'm going to use it. So let's click this drop down and let's choose depth map. And when I do that, you'll see that already the image is starting to look better. Now, my model is still out of focus, but you see uh, this section right here where it says set focal point and also blur focal distance. If I take the slider and drag it, I can change the focal distance or this set focal point little icon right now is checked on and you see my little, see my uh, pointer with that square with the crosshatch. Now, if I click on her eye, I'm setting the focal distance when I click that. Now you'll notice her face will come right into focus and now I have this beautiful image with an out of focus background and I have noise in the background because I have this distribution set to uniform and monochromatic. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see the noise. I'll go ahead and zoom in to uh, 200% so you can really see this noise. And you see that noise in the out of focus area? Really nice. Now you'll notice that the noise in the darker areas of the out of focus areas are there's a lot more noise prevalent than error in the lighter areas. And that's natural. That's the way noise actually would appear when you're shooting with your camera. Now we have to match the noise of the background to the actual in focus areas of the image. To do that, I recommend that you zoom into around 200%. Now, if we look at our model here, we can see some noise here. There's more noise on the background than is on the model. So that's this amount here. So I'm gonna change this amount from three. Let's, let's change it to, well, if I go to zero, you'll see there's no noise and that doesn't look good, right? Let's try. It's a little sensitive. Let's try two and see what we get. There's two. Now, I think that match is pretty good. And a lot of times what I like to do, you have a, your choice between uniform noise and Gaussian noise. So I try both just to see which one gives me the better result. Now, Gaussian usually looks a little stronger than uniform. In this case, I think uniform is going to be good. And yeah, I think that matches up pretty good. Let's try one. I'm just going to type in a one and see what I get here. Give it a second to render out. One's not quite enough, so I think I need a two, so I'm just going to type two. And I find either one, two, or three is really what gets you good results. And you also have your choice between monochromatic when it's checked on or color noise when it's checked off. And I generally just use monochromatic. I seem to get the best results with monochromatic. Let's go ahead and fit this to screen. If you come to the lower left side of the interface, 
click here and fit in view, give it a second or two to render out, and there we go. Now we can take a look at it. Now it looks really nice. Now if you click this preview here, you can see there is the before, and click it again, here's the after. So I really like these results, very realistic. If you wanted less blur, you could take this radius and you could cut it back if you wanted to. But in our case, I think I'm gonna leave it up at 100%. I think it really looks good there. And if you're happy with everything, at this point, all you need to do is click OK, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. So here is our before, and here is our after. But it's that easy to get realistic uh, bokeh effects on your image using the lens blur filter, along with a depth map, which we got from the neural depth blur filter. I just noticed I missed a piece of our pants right here. An easy fix, just get a uh, layer mask and get a brush with black paint. Make sure you're painting with black paint. And I'm going to go with a smaller brush at 100% opacity and just paint the pants back in right there. Just that simple. I overshot it. I'll just change the white paint. And fix that little section right there and that fixes that now let me show you how to use the action that i'm going to give you i'll leave a link in the description below this video where you can download this action now once you download the action open up the folder that it's in and double click on the action and that will install it into your photoshop actions and by the way photoshop can be open at this time now let me show you how to use that action let me start you from the beginning pretend we want to add a nice bokeh background to this image. So what we're going to do is come up to filter, go to neural filters, and then we want to open up the uh, depth blur filter. We're going to simply check off output depth map only, click on that. We're going to see a depth map come up here. Make sure your output is set to a duplicate layer. Click OK. That'll bring us right back into Photoshop with this depth map. And then all you need to do at this point is is you can repair anything you need to repair in the depth map. Because remember this protrusion here, I painted on here to fix it. You can do any of that kind of stuff you want. But then when you're ready to send this into the lens blur filter to add the actual lens blur onto it, what you need to do is open up your actions, come to the depth map section under the joy of editing group. It'll be inside the joy of editing group, depth map. Make sure you have depth map selected. Click play, it'll run that action. Okay, it basically duplicates the background layer. That's all it does, but it also creates a depth map for you. So now when you open up the lens blur filter, well, that depth map will now be available for you. Well, there it is, everyone. Give this a try. I think you're going to like it. It's easy to do, and I think the uh, action will really help you out. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.